Welcome and thank you for coming to uh, listen to our little presentation. Uh, I hope you are having a great time here at the OS Summit in Japan this year. Uh, my name is Joachim Larsen and I am representing the platform SI service and EA departments at NEC. And uh, together with me is the, uh, the leading developer of uh, Exastro, uh, Ekiba Takeo. He will be taking questions at the end of the presentation. And uh, today I will be talking about how we can use open source software to um, solve problems often found in system operations. So a little bit about myself first. Uh, I come from Norway, which is most uh, well known for salmon, uh, trolls, maybe the Vikings. And uh, I work for a company called Digital Information Technology, or also uh, called for DIT. And for the last three years, I've been working at the NEC Exastro project as a developer, technical writer, as well as the lead translator and interpreter. So, have you ever thought of how we would be to live in a perfect world? Well, in terms of system operations. I'm not going to talk about uh, fixing world hunger today. But just think about it. In a perfect world, also uh, the whole system would be regulated by the perf perfect surveillance policies and no system task would be any problem. So that's what the, real, that's what the perfect world would be. In real life, that's not the, uh, that's not the case. Um, most system surveillance policies are unregulated, and there are numerous unnecessary alerts coming to the developers left and right. So what they have to do is that staff have to begin their day sorting through known and unknown events every day. And in this session, I will demonstrate how we can use open source software um, to assist us in real life situations, so we can get one step closer to that perfect world. So our amazing team here at Exastro is made of engineers with experience from Japanese systems. And um, we went to collect all of their complaints and what they had to say, uh, working on current project as well as past projects. And one of the, some of the most uh, seen complaints that we heard was that uh, in most cases, they wouldn't know what parameters they could change during system operations. Uh, in many cases, they would have to read through a large number of manuals in order to find out what to do, as well as the system operation itself was very dependent on experts, meaning that if the experts would leave, um, they wouldn't know what to do. So, looking at the problems, we can see that numerous of them uh, originate from the same root. And in fact, most of them only narrowed down to these three problems. Um, human errors uh, caused by manual labor, uh, situations getting worse because the solutions are delayed, as well as, as I said, uh, the solutions being heavily dependent on expertise. Now, what can we do about that? Well, in order to reduce human errors, we could link the system to automation software um, so machines can execute the solutions for us. And if the solutions are getting repeatedly worse because the uh, solutions are getting late, then we should be able to start recovery the moment the, the problem is found. And for the last one, what we came up with is that we could use a uh, user-based uh, rule that uh, the system will read in order to find out what to do when a problem arises. So in the next slides, uh, I will show you how we can use different uh, open source software to reach that solution. So, just like cars, all systems need to be maintained in order to run smoothly. Um, but the ones that have to do the maintaining are waiting for incidents that who knows when are going to happen. So instead of being able to use their time productively and use them to do more important tasks, they are often waiting or doing mundane tasks. So the solution to this would then be to solve the th uh, three problems that I showed earlier. And we believe that the most effective way to do that would be to automate the process and the pipeline. 
So easy, right? We just automate the alert and event system. Well, doing so for single alerts and single problems itself wouldn't be that hard. But often in real life problems, um, the engineers would have to sort through the data. They would have to gather the events alert from multiple monitoring applications. Um, and then they would have to evaluate the problem to find out what the necessary solution would be. So when it comes to this, then we might require some more sophisticated logic. So for example, what we would have to do is that we would, one, uh, collect the alert events from all the different uh, monitoring tools. And then uh, number two, we would have to unify the data so we could compare them to each other. Uh, three, we would have to evaluate the messages in order to find out what the proper solution should be. And then four, take those results and re-evaluate them um, to analyze the more, uh, to analyze it more. And then finally five, uh, we can then use that re-evaluation to decide on what the final solution should be. So again, what seemed like simple as a concept uh, turns out to be more complicated when put into practice. So jumping right into it, this is our very simple solution to solving the three problems. Um, it might seem like a lot of first, but it's actually quite simple when we get to look at it. Um, don't worry, as I will uh, go, it, uh, go through it bit by bit. So starting from the left, you can see that we have a number of open source software listed. We have uh, Grafana, uh, Prometheus, Zabbix. In the middle, uh, we have MongoDB. We have MariaDB. So, well, we have the, uh, automation tools such as Ansible and uh, OpenTofu. And we have Mattermost. So in the midst of all this, you can see something called Exastro, uh, which is a suite or a uh, collection of different software led by our team and proudly published as open software. Uh, you can see Exastro OASA in the middle, which is a tool that can connect with different monitoring tools and automatically decide uh, recovery actions based on user-written rules. Besides it, we have Exastro IT Automation, which is able to connect with other automation tools such as uh, Ansible and OpenTofu and uh, have them uh, carry out and execute the solutions for us. And yeah, let me break the process down bit by bit now that you know the uh, programs. So starting with the easiest part, we can see that we have, well, we can have, we have the system here on the right. And uh, we have all these different system components, virtual machines uh, on the different devices. And a few years ago, these components used to be physical, uh, network devices and um, uh, databases, storage devices. They were often coupled together with uh, webs and apps and other databases, creating a uh, very common three-layer structure. And comparing that to today, we can see improvements in the industry have led to the, not only the monitoring itself being uh, much more efficient and better, but also that the system itself has become more complicated. Now that we have uh, virtual layers with, uh, with a component such as virtual machines and uh, containers. Uh, yeah. And that itself wouldn't be a problem, but it makes it harder for us to monitor the whole system. Um, now that the parts are interchanging and they are going in and out. It would be if, if we were a teacher for a 30 uh, student class, uh, but instead of the class consisting of the same 30 students, they would, uh, the students themselves would change in and out every day, making it very hard for us to keep up. So what do we do to keep up? Well, that's why we have the monitoring tools on the left. So now that uh, we have the tools, how do we go about this without everything being a cluttered mess? Well, 
majority of uh, the monitoring, including new uh, monitoring techniques, uses some sort of manual uh, labor. So that also means that the information we can gather from the different uh, applications will have to be sorted manually. And with the amount of information found from the modern systems that are getting increasingly more and more, becomes more and more um, an option that's not feasible. So what can we do? Well, the proposed solution would then be to automate the process. Let the machine do, uh, let the machine sort as much as they can and let them handle as many cases as possible. That's not to say that we should let machines do everything. Uh, I don't even think this is possible for this case. As um, the system needs to have user written rules in order to know what to do. And if uh, a system encounters an unknown event that's the not user defined, then it won't know what to do. And I'm sure we could use some AI, but at this point in time, I don't think any super AI or chat GPT-8 would help us. This is a step that requires humans. And that is why we created Exastro. Um, Exastro has the ability to use MongoDB, uh, MariaDB, Ansible, and OpenTofu, and other OSS to help us out with this problem. Now, how do we do that? Well, as stated earlier, uh, one of Exastro's functions allows it to collect alert events from multiple monitoring software and it has a backing service for aggregating them. And Exastro was a in uh, specifically uses MongoDB, a uh, no SQL for its backing service. And doing so allows us to gather alerts and events from different monitoring applications. Now, this is important because all of these wonderful monitoring apps are different and unique and they have uh, different use cases. But that also means that um, their messaging and their alert system is different from each other, which is not exactly what we want in this case. Um, we want the messages to be the same. So while some monitoring apps might say, uh, say that the system stopped, then one might say system equals stop, or some other might say uh, power equals down. And that automatically makes it harder for us as we now have to compare events with different data types. And because they're all different, the system is going to receive multiple alerts about the same problem. So in this case, we have to unify the data uh, before we can compare them. This is where Exastro OASE comes in, as that it uh, comes with the function of being able to label the events. So where we, where we would have statuses that said uh, power equals down or uh, status equals stopped, we could all label them as um, say service down equals true. And now that we have them labeled, we can actually work with them. Um, we can use them so the system knows that all of these messages comes from one problem. So instead of sending hundreds of different messages to the user, it can send one with the same information. And that way, the engineers won't have to spend a whole day reading through and sorting through the messages. And now we can also utilize OASA to make the system operations much easier on the user. If Exastro OASA receives an alert that a user has already defined a rule for, um, it will be able to send that to the automation software and tell them to execute this action. Uh, so after con continuing a couple of uh, if statements, it can then automatically make the final decision. Um, say for example, we write a rule that says uh, if message says website is down, then restart server. And not only that, it is also able to 
re-evaluate any executed actions. So whenever an event matches a rule in OASE, the result is uh, registered to MongoDB as an event, where it will then be able to be checked if it matches with any other rules. In other words, we can manage more complex and longer rules by writing single uh, if statements. So, next step. When once it decides on an action, it sends a message to Exastro IT automation, which will then take care of the recovery tasks. Uh, we can link ITA um, together with automation tools, uh, Ansible and OpenTofu, making the whole process automated. And the system can even send a message uh, to the user containing any information regarding the event. So that is our idea of how we can combine different open source software to solve uh, mundane system operations. We can start, say that the system uh, are low on uh, memory, uh, low storage on the system. The monitoring apps will then be able to see that and send or uh, and make an alert. The OS agent will then pick that up and put it in the database, where it will also unify them, so they are all labeled at the same. Then, say if the user had written a rule that says, uh, if low on storage, delete cache data. Exastro also would then see that, OK, this message came, and we have a rule. That matches it, so we can send the action to Exastro Automation. And then, Exastro IT Automation will then send that to Ansible or OpenTofu, which will execute uh, the action and delete the cache data on the system. And to summarize it, we can see here that the problems can be solved with the help of the software. To reduce human errors, we can link with automation software, uh, in this case, Exastro ITA, Ansible, OpenTofu, and have them uh, automatically execute the solution. Um, for the second one, uh, delayed solutions, if we automate the pipeline and have it connected to Exastro OSA and monitoring tools, we can have the recovery start the moment they are detected. And for the last one, if we use uh, predefined user-written rules, then the system can be able to work on itself, and even if the experts go away, the know-how will stay. Of course, we know that this won't solve everything, um, but we do believe that this can help engineers all over the world, uh, freeing them from the same boring system tasks that they have to do. Now, while I do have the stage, I would also like to briefly talk about the Exastro suite. So, Exastro is a collection of open source software created with the purpose of digitizing and automating the system life uh, so we can save labor. And it contains different software with different purposes. Uh, today, I mainly talked about Exastro OASE, but I also uh, briefly touched upon Exastro IT automation, which is um, specifically created in order to um, automate system operations. Uh, we've gotten a lot of positive feedback for Exastro ITA, um, especially with its excellent, um, excellent connectivity uh, with uh, Ansible and uh, OpenTofu. And it is, as of right now, the most used software in uh, the Exastro suite. We also have Exastro Epoch, the green one on the screen. Um, our, uh, brand, our brand new uh, DevOps tool created to accelerate cloud-native system development. Um, just mind that Epoch is not readily available overseas, um, but it will be available very soon. And if you have any questions regarding any of the software on the screen, uh, feel free to shoot us an email or ask us after uh, this presentation, and we will be able to answer any questions that you might have. You can also find more information by searching for Exastro or uh, following the QR code on the screen. 
uh, both Exastro ITA and Uase, the software I introduced today, are available in uh, both English and Japanese. And uh, as well as together with the, uh, all the documentations, we have, uh, we have guides and we have an FAQ page. And lastly, I would just like to introduce Exastro IT Automation as a cloud service. Um, it is now available through NEC. Uh, if you would like to skip uh, the process of constructing the right environment and installing the software, NEC does provide uh, ITA and Ansible uh, as a, a ready-to-use package. Um, it is available as a uh, service, uh, software as a service, and it can be used uh, within two days after application and all updates and maintenance are done by NEC. If this sounds interesting, you can send a mail to the mail in the corner, info at ebiz.jp.nec.com. And that concludes our presentation. Uh, thank you for your time, and we ha hope you uh, enjoy the rest of the forum. Okay. Are there any questions? Yes. Uh, thanks for the talk. Um, yeah, so I like the idea of automatic remediation of alerts, um, mm -hmm. but I also think it could be quite, um, how to say, problematic. Some of, the, or like, if like a naive thing would be, uh, there's a disk full alert. Mm -hmm. The naive thing is just to extend the disk, um, mm -hmm. and but it could be caused by a an application that's misbehaving or just filling up the database and just mm -hmm. adding disk, and it could be quite costly. Do you have sort of like a set of best practice? remediations that you sort of, these are the things that we found to be good sort of patterns or uh, responses to alerts or, or stuff like that? Uh, I will ask, the, I will uh, carry on the question to the dev leader. Uh, excuse me, could you just repeat the last part of the question? Yeah, so do you have a set of best practices that sort of you've collected, like have you sort of, oh this, this type of alert is you, you, you should solve it in this way, or um, like you said, mm -hmm. disk full, delete the cache, or um, something. You know, do you have a set of practices that yeah. sort of collected? えっと、ワーズに関して具体例とか、今までこれこういうルールあってよかったなとか思うのありますか？ よくある運用現場での課題としてはですね、日本の運用現場でよくあるのが監視、監視のアラートメッセージを、アラートメッセージを受信して、そのメッセージに対して、メッセージというのが1万件の大量のメッセージを受け取っていると。で、その1万件のアラートメッセージのうち本当に必要なのってごく一部で、ま、数百件とかっていうものしかなくて、で、えっと、その中でえ、いらないようなえっと、運用現場で使われるシーンとなってます。あ、ま、まずはそういう、は
このアラートメッセージはこういう、えーまあ、まずこういう条件に当てはまるかという、えー、トゥルーオアフォルスの、えー、判断をするとでまたそのトゥルーの時にさらに、えーまあ、別の、えー、例えばログを分析してそのログから、えー、今回は、えー、このパターンっていうこの、えー、たくさんの条件,条件を並べて最終的なアクションっていうのを判断するっていうところが、えー、とこのツールの素晴らしいところです。So, and the next thing would be that although we have、uh, automation tools that are able to automatically、um, apply solutions or any actions to the problems if、uh, the problem or the system,、uh, the strength of Waze is the ability to be able to use, use written rules. To then、um, have the system decide if,、uh, for example, it will、um, read through the logs to see what the problem is. Then, if it reads in the log that it has this problem, then it could decide、uh, what the action should be. えっと、例えば、えっと、そうですね、えー、っとよくあるのが、えっと、アラート一つのアラートメッセージを受信して、えー、そのメッセージに対してログを、えー、回収収集するとでそのログを、えー、そのログの中から、えっとまあ、ある特定の文言を、えー、あのなんていうんですかね解,解析してそれに対してえーまあ、さらにそのどういう対処をするかっていう判断をしてで適切なアクションを実行するでそれが終わったらその結果をさらに、えー、とイグザストロが確認をして、えー、そのサービスが復旧しているかというところを確認して最終的なその復旧っていうところまでの一連のプロセスを、えー、実施できたっていうところですかね。So one of the, um... Scenes that we've used see and、uh, was、uh, do the best at is、uh, not only being able to automatically、uh, select what the action should be, but it would be that after it's taking the selection, it can then monitor the or check if the system has、uh, recovered and then、uh, keep on going. I hope that answered your question. Thank you. Yes. Uh, thanks to talk. But, Thank you.、Uh, uh, is it possible to、uh, monitoring OSC itself? Monitoring OSC OSC itself. Ah, OSC 自体を監視することで可能ですか？えっと、OS あなるほど。あ、OSC のあ、あそちらのえご質問の意味は。えっと、オアゼの健全性についてをモニタリングする方法があるかという話ですそう,そ,うあのふそ,うそれも含めて全体他のアプリケーションと条件に含められるか、so、including other rules. あ他のルールも含めてイエスあ他のルールも含めてあのオアゼ自体の監視もできるのかっていう、まあ、簡単な質問なんですあそうですあはいイエスイエスあできます。例えばですけど、えー、とサービス監視でエラーが出てると、えーまあ、あのウェブのサービス監視でアラートが上がってるっていうような状況の時に、えー、とウェブアプリケーションのサービスがダウンしてるっていう判断がどこに原因があるのかっていうところがいろいろ状況によって異なると思います。例えばそのウェブアプリケーション自体の問題っていうのも当然ありますしあとはそ,のそこまでのネットワーク回線が切断してるっていうようなパターンとかあるいはそのバッ,バックエンドのアプリケーションというかロジックの部分が
落ちてたりとかデータベースが、えー、負荷で、えー、滞留してるとか、まあ、そういったようないろんな状況があると思うんですけど、えっと、それをですねあの例えばそのウェブアプリ、えっと、サービスが落ちてるっていう時に、えっと、その、まあ、10分以内とか例えばですけど10分以内にウェブアプリケーションのアラートしか上がらなければそれはネットワーク上の問題でしょう。でそのウェブ URL 監視でアラートが上がってるけどその後に実はデータベースの CPU 使用率が 90% を超えてるっていうのが、まあ、別のアラートとか、まあ、ログから分かりましたっていう複合的な条件の時はこれはデータベースの負荷が高いから、まあ、データベースを負荷を軽減するように例えばそのトラフィック量を絞りましょうとかそういったような、まあ、条件、えー、と同じアラートが出ていても他の事象が発生しているとまたその対処が変わるっていうような、えー、そういったような、えー、ことができます。あ、答えになってます。So, so in the case of say that a web application goes down、um, and we only get that information, that might be because of several reasons.、Um, say that for example, it might be something wrong with the database. Uh, there might be instability with the network, or it can be well, low in memory or something else. So, if we get that, then the system would be able to check first that, okay, maybe it's wrong with the network, maybe it's unstable. And first check that, but if it then later comes to the conclusion that, oh, we can see that the database uses、uh, the, the CPU for the database. Is over 90%, then we might do that instead. So it's able to check all of these different causes and then find out that, okay, we have all these problems, but this is the one that's the problem. I hope that's. Okay, thank you. Yes. Any more questions? No, I think we're good. Again,、um, if you would like to contact us or see anything more, you can contact us at the email here. Thank you. <laughs>